Um, allow me to introduce the, uh, the panel today. I'll just give you a quick overview of what we intend to discuss. Yes, it is about greenfield cities, about new cities, and about the role of technology. So, I mean, you've probably heard a lot about it. What makes this panel special is that we will look at real cities, real senior executives who will discuss with me the role of technology in the life cycle of their city, what has worked, what hasn't worked, and also specifically, I mean, given this quest for what we call digitally native cities, how do you, as you bake in technology when you design a city, how do you avoid being trapped by the same technology five, ten years later? So, with that, allow me to introduce, without further ado, uh, Shaishaf Daria, the Regional Chief Executive Officer of Pavlava City in India. Those of you that know uh, Modi's Smart City, 100 Smart City initiative that we heard about in an earlier panel today, they will know that Pavlava City is one of those cities in the Dubai Mumbai Industrial Corridor, and you're the man who made it smart. So, Thank you very welcome. much for the introduction. Please. Next, allow me to introduce Carl Gazer, the Chief Executive Officer of Zargos Gateway. We all heard about the new Silk Road. We heard about uh, how China and the West are coming together. This is the man who sits, who built a city at the linchpin of East and West, with a tremendous uh, uh, global experience, a lot of in, Af in Africa, very interesting for me, of course. Sure. And uh, I welcome you to the panel. Thank Please. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. <coughs> Allow me to introduce next uh, President Han, the Chief Executive Officer of POSCO Engineering and Construction, with a storied background that included postings in, as I found out, Bangladesh, Nigeria and Iran, yeah, and now, of course, heading the company that made Songdo the reality that you are in. Please. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Next, allow me to introduce Preston Mendenhall, the head of corporate affairs of Rendeva, with an equally varied background that involved a long stint in Russia. He is now Africa's largest urban developer, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, especially active in Ghana and in Kenya with some very large industrial mixed-use developments. That's right. Right. Thank you. Please. And uh, I would also, I mean, having grown up in Egypt, as I think you've uh, figured out now, I would like to introduce the gentleman who leads what is undoubtedly one of the most exciting projects in the country and in the region, the new capital, uh, Ayman Ismail Suleiman, yeah, the chairman of Thank the new capital Thank you. in Egypt. Please. So as you can see, we have a panel of decision makers, decision makers on new cities, decision makers on technology, and uh, also leaders who have to live with the decisions they make for a very long time. So having said that, Shaishaf, if I can start with you, if you allow me. I mean, sure. when we talked yesterday, I, I think one of the key differentiators you saw in Pavlava City was the fact that you were not only the developer, but also the operator. And maybe if you just introduce the city and tell us a little bit about how you used technology to interact with the citizens and have corporate governance. Sure. Uh, so Palava City is a project by the Lodha Group, which is uh, India's largest real estate developer. We own about 25 square kilometers of land in now what is pretty much the city of Mumbai, the extended city of Mumbai. So a little like Songdo, uh, but maybe even closer to Seoul, making it quite strategic in that sense, given its proximity to the financial capital. Uh, Palava City started in 2010. And so far, we have sold about 27,000 homes and delivered about 20,000. And we already have a population of about 60,000 people living in Palawa City. So to your question, Kasper, uh, what's interesting in the way the regulation is set up is when you develop such large projects, as a developer, it is mandated on us that until the last building is built, plus five years, 
you will actually govern the development. So the government recognizes that such large-scale developments require a completely differentiated way of managing the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So that's the task. So in case of Palava, it could take another 40 years to develop the entire landmass, plus 5, 45, so at least two generations of governance is what we have to do. Uh, so we've set up a not-for-profit organization called Palava City Management Association, which governs the city. Now what's interesting in this model is, because I'm the developer, I sell continuously, I also govern, my objective function is perfectly aligned, right? How I govern the city dictates uh, how the future of the city will do. How I design the city is designed keeping in mind I have to run it for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. So I think the objective function is perfectly aligned. Mm -hmm. And that's where technology comes in. Uh, how do you adopt it so that you can govern it effectively, but at a very effective cost? Because that's ultimately what the citizens will hold us accountable on. So I'll give an example of how we think about this now. Right? Uh, everybody understands the word CCTV, right? Uh, so clearly, that's an important aspect. But the way we look at it is, CCTV would be citizen, community, technology, vision. So three out of the four is the software element. So when we make decisions on what smart city elements to take on, what technology investments to make, it must satisfy one of these criteria, which is, does it make a dramatic difference to the life of the citizen? or reduces their cost? Does it help us in engaging communities and making them better? Or does it align to the longer term vision, which may not be directly visible to the citizen? So for example, does technology help me in preserving natural resources like water? Because that's going to be the future challenge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it meets one of these three criteria, we will invest and we will build it. Else, if it's just a nice to have, we actually can't afford it, and we wouldn't do yeah. it. And so that's how the journey started in 2010 for us. And did you plan this from the very beginning? I mean, as you were building your city master plan, did you look at information, communication, technology, ICT? Did you look at as that as uh, a key thing to, to do at the same time? Uh, the honest answer is no. When we started the master plan, work started in 2008, mm -hmm. closed down in 2010. It wasn't as important, but uh, in 2012, as we were doing the physical infrastructure work, mm -hmm. it just became important that the first thing we had to do was fiber the entire city. Yeah. We knew that in the future, if the city was completely fibered, then whatever enhancements we wanted to make, sensors, communication systems, would all work. Uh, unknowingly or knowingly, that was probably one of the smartest things we did in 2012, uh -huh. when at least in India, that was not a normal thing to do. And today, the entire network rides on that two ways yeah. and has allowed us to scale up quite effectively. So this is infrastructure up, yep. such to speak, right? Now, what are the one last question before I, I, I move on. You, when we talked yesterday, you, you mentioned uh, some technologies that you had you know, bet on that didn't work out and that you find, found a much better and cheaper alternative. Maybe if you tell us about that. I, I thought that was a genius uh, idea, please. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we recognize, we, we, we collaborate with other cities and we learn from them, right? So the mm -hmm. team's mandate is uh, pilot as much as you want, try to get 80% right, 20% failure, no issue, right? So that's the construct in which you start. Mm -hmm. So hopefully 80% of what we've done worked. But to your point on what didn't work is, you know, we spent a lot of time and effort designing the city portal, you know, uh, on a web-based platform. Uh, looking at various cities across the world, and we hoped that was our means of citizen communication two ways. And actually it failed because it took some time to develop, mm -hmm. and over time it actually became quite obsolete as an as a interface. Uh, I had met someone in Malaysia, I think it's a city called Bangduk, and the mayor out there is completely connected to all his citizens using Twitter. Right? I think it has a population of 3 lakh, 300,000 and about 250,000 on Twitter. So we actually went back and said, uh, I can't keep understanding how technology UI is going to change. Today, at least in India, the most accepted social media is Facebook. So we took the experiment and put our entire governance model on Facebook. 
So point is that every citizen, I can communicate what's happening in the city, what's planned. We hear about rumors, we can take off misconceptions, but at the same time, they can actually write back and say X and Y is not working, and I'm sitting out there following it virtually every day, knowing what has not worked, yeah. bring it up to my team. In many cases, I will ask for a photograph after it's fixed uh, to be either uploaded or sent back to us, right? So actually now, every 60,000 population is a human sensor within yeah. Palawa yeah. that monitors the city, looks at how it's working, and reports back if something is not working. So we've actually realized that uh, in technology, when it comes to mm -hmm. tools, platforms, try to adopt where Mark Zuckerberg can do a far better job in training people on adopting Facebook mm -hmm. than I could ever do that part. Mm -hmm. So use those platforms. Great. What came to my mind when you were saying that if I'm brave enough to put all of our customers onto uh, Facebook and uh, mm -hmm. That's definitely something to think about. I think it's a, a great move. We were very scared, right? Yeah. To kind of expose ourselves yeah. Yeah. for everyone to basically write positive or negative. But someone explained to me saying that whether you like it or not, customers are going to create their own Google groups. They're going to chat yes. amongst themselves. Yes. So you might as well immerse yourself in the discussion rather than being so defensive. Mm -hmm. So maybe very something true. for you. Yep. Absolutely. Now, um, if I move from connecting and interacting with a city to being really at the linchpin of entire digital systems, Carl, in, uh, in your city, I mean, maybe if you tell us a little bit how it is to really start with nothing, yeah, and then take it to being a digital connector, mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. Okay, I could go on for the next three hours, so I will try to cut it a bit short, but Kurgos Gateway is, is, maybe I should start by explaining the basic concept of it. Kurgos Gateway is a city which we are creating on the border between Kazakhstan and China. It is about the Chinese program, which you mentioned in your book with Chongqing and Chengdu, about the movement in China to go west in China. So China is coming towards Europe on the Eurasian continent. But on the border of China and Kazakhstan, they want to send these trains all the way through, but the train tracks are changing. So we have a logistical event, the train stops, they have to do something with the train, whichever you have to do, but you have to do something with that train. Mm -hmm. So based on that event, the government decided, let's create an economy around that event. Mm -hmm. Because to get to that region, you drive five hours with a car and there is nothing. You are literally in the middle of nowhere on the Kazakh steppe, on the Chinese steppe. You're in the middle of nowhere. But still there is a logistic activity happening there. So both governments, Kazakhstan and China, decided let's make an economy locally there in the middle of that nowhere. And that's where Korgos is. So this is where these trains come. Mm -hmm. And this is where we come from Chongqing and Chengdu and all these places. We go through Korgos and we connect we connect to Western Europe, to Northern Europe, to Central Europe, to Southern Europe, and now we start connecting to Iran also. This is a physical connection, this is about logistics, it's, a, it's about the hardware of it, but because of that physical connection, we start connecting all the individual places, and that's the key word of, of, of such a project, is about interconnectivity. What's happening with that Silk Road, or the One Belt, One Road, let's say, China is making a big land bridge on the continent, and all along this corridor of all ways, and, and you start seeing new civilizations, new cities, new activities, and Kurgos is one of them, but it is the key destination where the two continents meet. It is where the, where the trains come, and, and where we say it in the media sometimes, it is where the East meets the West, because that's where the trains connect with Europe. Mm -hmm. Was it? I mean, wh when you started, the way, I, the way you've explained it is, I mean, there was nothing. What role at the time did, play, did technology infrastructure play? I mean, uh, did you think about it? Is that something that over time became important? Uh, and where is it now as this grows to a bigger city? Um, well, we took on the project that we started. So you, you have to, to picture yourself here in the middle of a steppe. The only thing you see is farmers 
and, and sheep herders and things like that, so there is nothing. And we come with port technology with the most sophisticated, advanced Wi-Fi, direct transmission, automatic gate recognition, all these things in the middle of nowhere. There's no street, there's no electricity, there's no nothing. So you need to create that environment, you, ne you need to bring the people in, you need to make the hardware, but you need to train your people. So one of the things with which we were planning, we said, okay, we will do online training and virtual training. The only detail is there was no internet and there was no electricity, so there's no online training. So you start from scratch. But now we go, and, and I saw that on, on the panelists mentioned former CEO, that doesn't mean I'm out of job, that means the first stage of the project is completed and I'm moving on. So that first stage is completed <laughs> actually, and, and now we have a small city of 10,000 people there. Mm -hmm. It is not the most sexy and advanced city in the world yet. For the moment, it's still a functional place, but we need to start with something. You need to bring your people in from all over the country. So we had no internet, we, didn't, we couldn't do online training, but now we started having the hard connection and the internet and everything is coming now. It's like mm -hmm. the song of Dire Straits where, where they sing about the telegraph road. This is what we are doing in Central Asia. So now we have internet and now we connect with Chongqing, with Chengdu, with the most advanced, new, big, massive cities in China. And we are the connection point physically but also virtually now, because the information flow is going through our port. You book your container in Shanghai or wherever, the data from that container goes straight to the dried port, goes straight to destination in Europe. We are connecting, for example, let me give you one example, uh, Estonia. That's one of the, most of the trains for the moment are going to Duisburg in Germany, in Germany but we are looking to develop new regions in Europe. One of the focus places that, that we looked at for the last couple of weeks is Estonia. Estonia is possibly one of the smallest countries in Europe, if not the world. Total population, I guess, is one million, so they fit many Estonians in your one city already. But Estonia, they came, and I have to take my notes for that, but they came out of Soviet occupation in 1991. So Estonia as a country, they became independent in 1991. They had nothing, they had no economy, no, no, they had literally nothing. Less than 50% of the people in Estonia had connection to a landline analog telephone. Less than 50%. So then they had the neighbors from Finland. And Finland came to Estonia. They said, we will help you in your development away from Soviet Union. We will help your country to develop. You can have all our, our uh, second-hand uh, analog telephone systems for free. We will flood your country. Everybody will have a telephone for free from us. And the answer from Estonia was, thank you, but no thank you. They said, we will skip the stage. We, will, we have to go to the future. We are a small country, we are a small player, so we have to go to the future. So Estonia, as a country, decided we will go digital mm -hmm. at that time. So they said to, to Finland, thank you very much for your analog telephones, we will not use them, we will go digital. So they started a period of, of modernization, and one of the first things they implemented is they said, okay, we will connect all the schools to internet. Mm -hmm. You have to think it's 1991, so that was pretty advanced. By 1998, every single school in Estonia was connected to the internet. That was still early days of the countries, but they saw that, wow, we have something going, we have something that we can do. It sounds a long story, but I'm getting to mm -hmm. some point with it. But one year later, in the year 2000, the government of Estonia decided that access to internet, they changed the constitution. In the year 2000, they changed their constitution and access to internet became a basic human right for every citizen of Estonia. Mm -hmm. As far as I know, there is not one single country in the world mm -hmm. that has that in their constitution. It's a human right to have access to internet. That means now, 2017, you can go to the middle of the forest in Estonia, you will have Wi-Fi. For sure. So they come from Soviet system, and 20 years later, they are one of the most advanced connected countries in the world. Now I'm connecting Chongqing, where you write about in your book. We are connecting through the Silk Road. The containers coming from Chongqing, through Korgos, through Central Asia. We are connecting them to go to Estonia. And it's not just the trains going, now the information starts flowing also. Last detail about Estonia, for example, they came from Soviet Union. I don't know if anybody knows where Skype was invented, but that comes from Estonia. So they come from nowhere and suddenly they are at, on the top of the world on a digital age. So we are not talking about just 
digital cities because Kurgos as such is not a digital city, it's not yeah. a smart city, yeah. it's just a logistics hub. But we are connecting continents physically, but also through the Internet of Things with each other. Mm -hmm. And Estonia is not a smart city, mm -hmm. it's a smart country. So we are making it into a smart logistics Eurasian continent yeah. even. I'm really glad you're, you're saying all that because I think what is often overlooked in the smart city discourse is the importance of trade, of connecting cities, not just connecting the city with itself, but connecting True. cities with other cities. Which brings me to another great city, the one where we are, uh, which of course was initially founded on, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the Northeast Asia gateway, for one, and so secondly also with a very strong education theme, and that is Songdo. So, President Han, as uh, the man who leads the company that built Songdo, mm. yeah, can you tell us a bit about the genesis, how Songdo started, and how uh, info ICT, so uh, technology, was designed from the very beginning? The, uh, before we, uh, I mentioned the, so many, uh, you know, the detail of the Songdo and uh, yeah. uh, any uh, IT technology uh, applied to this uh, development of Songdo city. Uh, now I would like to, you know, the, uh, define the, some uh, concept Please. of the, uh, the new city and Song, uh, the smart city. And then now we come together here to discuss about uh, you know new city, mm -hmm. and but new city should be the uh, the smart city, and but uh, the this Songdo city is the part of the uh, existing city Incheon city, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. the, this uh, Incheon is the gate city uh, of the uh, Korea uh, because of the uh, international airport is very near uh, mm -hmm. from here. And then uh, the, this kind of existing city uh, should be, uh, you know, become smart, mm -hmm. you know, uh, for the future. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the, maybe I think the, uh, the, this Incheon city and Korean government uh, was thinking the how to uh, make the Incheon city, you know, the better smart. Uh, become mm -hmm. better smart, and but uh, it was not easy because the uh, the concept of the uh, the city is the you know brown field yep. and uh, somewhat uh, khaki field something like that, mm. and then the uh, is not easy to make it uh, you know the city uh, become smart, uh, but in case the uh, the Incheon city uh, make some area as a new city. Then uh, it's uh, somewhat more easier to make it the new city, uh, you know, smart. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. uh, I think the uh, Korean government, uh, mm -hmm. you know, make it this area. Uh, the this area was the uh, actually, you know, the uh, ocean. Yep. Okay. And then the uh, Incheon city uh, made the decision to uh, land the field mm -hmm. uh, this area and then the make the uh, mm -hmm. this you know the ground uh, so uh, the my point is the new city uh, is the uh, one of the good idea to make the uh, the, the to make the uh, smart city yep okay and so uh, on the base of it uh, the intern city uh, you know, made the, you know, the master plan, how to mm -hmm. uh, build this, uh, you know, Songdo mm -hmm. uh, as the smart city. Uh, and then the uh, uh, most important thing uh, is the, after the construction uh, is uh, somewhat progressed and then the, how uh, the city, gov uh, city government to make the uh, people come, you know, flow into mm -hmm. this new city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the major, you know, point uh, how uh, the, to make the uh, city and then to make it smart for the future. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, the rear, you know, wards of the Songdo city, there's the Incheon city. Incheon mm -hmm. city uh, has about uh, over three million, 
you know, population. Mm -hmm. And so that area was a little bit, you know, old area. And so many people would like to uh, make their, you know, the life more smart. Yeah. Then in case this uh, new, you know, city is uh, developed and then the built, and then the some, uh, you know, the environmental uh, is becoming, you know, very, uh, you know, smart. My point is smart is I will explain it later. Then they can, you know, flow into this city. That means they without, uh, you know, you know, increasing the some citizens uh, and the population. And then the, even though we, uh, you know, construct the build the city and then that's useless. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. so uh, there is a reason why the Incheon city uh, government uh, made the decision to, you know, the land the field here, this mm -hmm. area from the mm -hmm. ocean to uh, develop the uh, new uh, city. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the, uh, uh, after the, some, uh, you know, population come here into here, and then they must feel very comfortable yeah. uh, for their life. Yeah. And so uh, many, uh, you know, the uh, must, you know, the uh, the master plan must include the many kinds of, you know, the factors to make the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, the people uh, very comfortable. comfortable. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, uh, some, uh, you know, environmental, mm -hmm. you know, the conditions should be, uh, you know, uh, make it the people comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, they uh, made the uh, plan to build the, you know, some, uh, you know, park, yeah. and also they uh, try to uh, make the, uh, you know, build the uh, logistic, better logistic. Mm -hmm and then the, some uh, entertainment uh, facilities mm -hmm. and the education, uh, you know, facilities. Uh, and then the transportation connection uh, should, be, should be very uh, important to make the people mm -hmm. to live it comfortable mm -hmm. uh, condition. Uh, and then the energy, electricity power should mm -hmm. be, uh, you know, connected without any, uh, you know, the, you know, the shortage. And so that kind of a transport, uh, the electricity power uh, connection uh, is very important. And so that should be also the plan to, you know, connect from outside mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And also the uh, internally uh, here inside of, uh, you know, city, and then some renewable energy mm -hmm. uh, also uh, needed to be, uh, you know, equipped to, to make the, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the self-sufficient uh, mm -hmm. electricity power supply. And then the, also the uh, water, uh, mm. you know, supply is uh, required, mm. and uh, and the desalination, you know, facilities was uh, you know built mm. here, uh, and then the, also the uh, more important thing is the waste, you know, uh, you know water treatments, and then also the waste, uh, uh, you know, garbage mm. treatment mm. Uh, should be you know very uh, efficiently. Uh, you know, treated uh, to make the uh, city very clean mm -hmm. uh, on the base of this, uh, you know, master plan. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the, uh, this, uh, you know, city has been uh, divided yeah. uh, as this, some, um, uh, you know, the section. And so uh, there's uh, some area uh, should be developed as the uh, international business district. Uh, the other uh, area was, uh, you know, the built as the intelligent uh, industrial mm -hmm. uh, district, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then to uh, make the uh, you know the uh, environment condition better, and then the Incheon city uh, you know doesn't you know the the make the some decision doesn't to invite any you know industry to make mm -hmm. the you know uh, the environment condition you know the, some contamination. Something like that, yes. So the way I've understood is that you basically put the services to the citizen at the center of what you built. And when you were attracting the 
the people from Incheon, from elsewhere, to, to come to Songdo, to live in, uh, in Songdo, how important were the technology-based services? Uh, in their de do you think, in their mm. decision to come? Yeah, I and mean, then the first of all, you know, the uh, environmental condition mm -hmm. is the most important thing. So right. Digital doesn't mean the, uh, you know, smart. Yes. But for uh, when the, you know, population who, you know, the move into yeah. this Songdo city, yeah. uh, feel a better, you know, life, and then yeah. the nowadays uh, some digitalization yeah. Yeah. Uh, is, uh, you know, important to yeah. make it some more, uh, yeah. you know, comfortable, Comfort you know, comfortable. life. And so uh, the intelligent technology, IT yeah. uh, technology was, uh, you know, the, the adapted uh, to make this city uh, smart from the first time. So it, uh, mm -hmm. the construction was started from the uh, mm -hmm. maybe 2003 mm -hmm. here, and then now it's uh, 2017, mm -hmm. already uh, yeah. 14 years has yeah. been passed. Uh, yeah. and now, the, to, you know, the construction progress uh, uh, mm -hmm. to complete this city is uh, maybe about uh, mm -hmm. uh, 50 or 60 percent mm -hmm. has been completed. Mm -hmm. completed. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, first time the, uh, this city has been uh, designed to build as the ubiquitous city. city. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and but nowadays uh, it should be the smart city and then mm -hmm. the, the technology has been changed. Yeah. Uh, from first time uh, for making the UV quarter city, some uh, technology has been, uh, you know, adopted. First time the, uh, you know, this city has been, uh, you know, installed by the Cisco yeah. system. That's true. You know, 2003. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, and then the, most of yeah. the building was, uh, you know, equipped by the, uh, you know, Cisco home. The uh, home solution. Network yes. solution. Very true. Uh, uh, and the, but uh, nowadays, it should, it should be remodeling. Sure, uh, re sure. Remodeling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. Uh, and so then the also the somewhat... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the high density, uh, yeah. you know, uh, image and the video uh, mm. communication, yeah. uh, the system was, uh, you know, adopted and then the yeah. installed. Uh, and then... Uh, the uh, security uh, system yeah. is very important. So, um, yeah. the, uh, all the buildings was equipped by the CCTV, yeah. and then uh, this CCTV is controlled by the, you know, the central control Command room. Control. And yeah. so, uh, uh, this city, uh, the Songdo city, has been uh, built as the very yeah. uh, safe, yeah. you know, city. Okay. Thank you very much. So. I, uh, I want to come back to lessons learned, because mm. I think you just got to one, right? I mean, th there was a big focus in Songdo on education amongst other things, uh, and how to uh, provide education into your home via what was called the, the, the telepresence, um, which is the high de definition video conferencing. Um, and these things clearly change over time. But I, I want to leave lessons learned to the last, uh, as you can see, we've worked our way through Asia, and we are now at the gates of, uh, of Africa. So I will start with the Middle East, if that is okay. Uh, and um, I think we see a number of themes. W one is, I mean, a city built in the middle of nowhere, completely greenfield. The other one is probably more similar to uh, Songdo in this case, uh, a new city built greenfield, but adjacent to an existing city. And I think this is what, what you lead, which of course for anyone who has lived in Cairo, is, uh, it, it can't come soon enough. Mm -hmm. So if you tell us a little bit about what the project is, and then similar to what President Han uh, did, if you can tell us what are the key technology services that people will need in business and as citizens. So sure. you, thank you. Well, first it's a pleasure to be here and to, you know, honor to be on, on the panel. Um, and just a quick disclaimer, I do have few ties. These guys tricked me into like, you know, this is smart <laughs> cities, smart casual and stuff <laughs> like that. But I have few ties home. So uh, <laughs> anyway, you know, I think, you know, the, uh, you know, the capital Egypt is the project that we're working on. Um, 
for anyone who have lived in Cairo would know it's actually not a luxury. It's actually yeah. a necessity that we have. Cairo just got awarded uh, last year as the fastest growing city in the world, adding half a million people um, alone last year. You know, the urban planner who I believe was an ingenious, you know, uh, urban planner who have built Cairo, built it to carry, um, you know, five million people. Mm -hmm. Today it's carrying close to 20 million people and still operating, you know, to a certain degree. Oh, yeah. So actually, you know, expanding it yeah. uh, right now is, is actually a, a crucial yeah. um, element, um, you know, of the, um, you know, growth that, that Egypt yeah. needs to deliver. This actually project uh, fits in pretty well with Egypt's 2030 vision, mm -hmm. um, which has a base um, of urbanization. You know, urbanization is actually one of the most important area that the country need to focus on to deliver its, you know, economical growth. Uh, just to give you perspective, you know, the pharaohs with all their, you know, uh, amazing, you know, history and, and civilization, there were a million people living on 3% of the Egyptian land. Mm. Today, we're 90 million people living only on 6%. So in the 7,000 years, we have not been, you know, as, uh, you know, efficient in urbanizing our land as much as the pharaohs did, which mm. is mm. actually, you know, give the insight of the importance of urbanization. So that's actually one of three big projects currently running in, in the country. So there's the the capital Egypt, um, there's the Suez Canal economical zone, which is very similar to where we are here. And also there's another one, there's another city on the Mediterranean. Capital Egypt actually aims to be a regional city, like many of you. And I think, you know, when you're traveling and you're, whatever airline you open it, you'll always find, you know, the country of this airline is in the center of the world. We also believe that we are in the center of the world, so we believe that this city can actually um, connect east, west, uh, you know, north, uh, south. So we're looking to build a regional city, and obviously being a smart city is not mm -hmm. an option. That's actually a mandate for it mm -hmm. to, to accommodate that. We have four key strategic pillars that we're, we're focusing on. Um, one of them is that we contribute significantly to the GDP growth of the country. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the size of the land that we are aiming to develop is literally mm -hmm. the same size of Singapore, 700 square kilometer. Um, and, and basically, if you look at countries like Singapore, we're able to generate like $300 billion uh, worth of GDP. Dubai followed the same you know, model exactly. Today they generate $100 billion. Um, we're aiming to follow that path and, you know, the target that we have put to ourselves is a $10 billion by 2030, which I believe is achievable. The game here is basically population. So if we are able to attract the population, you know, mm -hmm. convince the people to move mm -hmm. from central Cairo to this new location, which is only mm -hmm. uh, 30 kilometers away, we will be able to deliver mm -hmm. those numbers. Mm -hmm. Now, few things that, you know, would enable us to do that, which is the, um, you know, moving the government, all the ministry from central Cairo to this new place. And that actually will give us the first mm -hmm. push because, you know, we can, you know, today, you know, the central government has around 100,000 people. Um, um, we don't envision that all of them will move. We're mm -hmm. actually you know, looking at an opportunity to use this project to reform mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to move um, and use technology actually to do a leapfrog and move into an e-government, mm -hmm. which will allow us to even improve the performance um, mm -hmm. uh, of, of the government. So we think mm -hmm. the number would be probably close to half or less than half mm -hmm. of that number. So that will also give us like, you know, the first move. The second area that's important for us is that basically one of the key competitive advantage that we have is the culture and history that we have behind us. I mean, this is a country that sits on a 7,000 years of culture. Cairo on its own has a lot of, you know, culture stuff and, and very old stuff from all the different civilization mm -hmm. all around us. So one of the things that also this project will help us do is by moving the government, which mostly sits in amazing buildings right now. Yes. Most, of, most of them are palaces and, and historical buildings that has a lot of value. 
that you know we will take over those buildings, refurbish them, and and put them into you into their proper use, whether museum, you know, boutique hotels, or mm -hmm. um, um, whatever you know would be best for them. So that actually, you know, there's a clear interaction between this project mm -hmm. and reviving mm -hmm. Cairo. The other one, which is I think related to to the topic that we're talking about today, is you know, we're very clear that if we want this project to succeed, we really need to run it differently than the way we're running most mm -hmm. of the cities in Egypt. So mm -hmm. we're now, you know, forming a city management services company, mm -hmm. um, and we're looking for, you know, partners from, from all over the world to come and help us. And I think, you know, I was really impressed by what I have seen here uh, in terms of the control room or all the system that they have. Um, because actually, for me, I think the definition of smart city is a bit loose, if you mm -hmm. want to call it. It's not about, you know, yeah, I don't think there is one definition for smart city. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's all about what is your purpose, what are you trying to do, and how are you going to put technology in use mm -hmm. to do that. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. there is the efficiency part that I think, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, I think your book covers that mm -hmm. um, in, in, in many different ways. But I think it's, it's actually also what are the industries that we're going to be focusing on? Yeah. How are we going to make the integrated, um, yeah. um, you know, between those industries and educations and, yeah. you know, the technology? Whether the technology will be able to, um, you know, give us that leapfrog or not, I think it's, it's a mindset. Yeah. Yeah. It's a mindset of, you know, I think Estonia, the example that you've talked about right now, is a great mindset we will be you know, at the cutting edge of the technology, and that's what we're aiming to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm not really worried about that, that the fact that the infrastructure that we're building right now will get obsolete. Mm -hmm. That's normal. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, it's more about how are we going to set ourselves in a way that accept the change faster than yeah. what we have been able yeah. to do before. Yeah. You mentioned something specific that I think uh, I'm also curious to explore in some of our other cities, which is uh, the role of the public sector, the role of the government in defining specifically what kind of technology services you want, what kind of smart services you want. I, I mean, I, I, I heard sure. it between the lines that uh, there's a mandate for the city to be smart, right? And I think that's not always the case. Right. If I remember your example, uh, there was just a mandate to connect. Yeah. Sure. So, can you, why is that? I mean, in what, in in Egypt, I mean, what? Wh why? I, I think has this initiative been successful in in convincing the presidency that smart cities are important? I mean, you know. Well, I, I I don't. I think I think it's actually the president uh, in in our cases is one of the biggest believer in that area. Yeah. I think he was here. He was really yeah. happy about what yeah. we have seen. But but I think. The foundation here is we have been, mm -hmm. over the last years, mm -hmm. lacking behind in many mm -hmm. areas. Mm -hmm. okay? And I think right now there is a deep belief that actually we need to, to use technology mm -hmm. to leapfrog mm -hmm. into the future. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why actually the theme of the city mm -hmm. you know, is tomorrow's civilization. Mm -hmm. We want to do that leapfrog, we want to do that kind of move into the future, but without losing the heritage that we have. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, in, in the case that you're talking about in terms of the government, I think actually uh, leveraging technology yeah. and moving into a e-government and changing the work processes yeah. is a brilliant opportunity you know, to capture that while you're doing the move. Yeah. I think trying to do that yeah. within the current environment is extremely difficult. Yeah. you know, and, and extremely challenging. Um, but I think doing that during the move mm -hmm. gives us a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. um, to, to do that. And we've done that even in the way we've designed the building. You know, one of mm -hmm. the things that we have made a decision on is that all the government buildings will move into an open space, mm -hmm. which is, you know, as you know, that's not the culture at all. No. <laughs> but, you know, what comes with an open yeah. space culture is yeah. actually more open to technology, more mm -hmm. open to you know, different ways of operating. No, that's, uh, that's fascinating. That really is. I want to again come also to the challengers, because I think the audience likes challengers. So I think I want to ask each one of you the big challenges that you are either are overcoming or have overcome. But before I go there, I want to go south. I want to 
ask you, Preston, how does all of that work in sub-Saharan Africa? I mean, you, you are building smart cities there. What is a smart city in, uh, let's say, in Kenya? Uh, what is similar? What is different? And how, you know, how are your projects going in that respect? Thank you. Well, to start by giving some, some context mm. about what we do, um, we're developing seven city-scale uh, developments in uh, sub-Saharan Africa, Kenya, Nigeria, Ghana, mm. DRC, and Zambia. Um, these are 20 to 40 kilometers from the CBDs. Um, why Africa? Africa is the fastest urbanizing uh, region in the world. Um, we view Africa as uh, what Asia was 30 to 40 years ago. If you think of Africa today and you think about conflicts and uh, economic problems, uh, dictators, well, that's what Asia was 40 years ago. And Africa is very uh, fast uh, reforming right now, so the reason why we're there. Um, in terms of uh, building cities in Africa, uh, you have to build what the market needs. Um, so we are not building a Songdo, um, fortunately or unfortunately, probably how you look at it, um, in, in Africa, but we are building um, smarter cities and mm -hmm. smarter developments mm -hmm. uh, that have one key asset, which I believe Songdo did, uh, had 15 years ago and continues to have as it grows, so that is, that is flexibility. Mm -hmm. um, we're, as new cities, uh, we can be flexible. Uh, we can, uh, the, the way we approach it is by starting um, only in a very conceptual level, so conceptual mm -hmm. master plan. Mm -hmm. As the market needs more areas of our development, as the demand is there, then we drill down and get into the more detailed uh, master plan. That means preparing yourself um, for, um, I can't say every eventuality, because there will be some that we, we miss, um, but looking at issues like parking, uh, looking at uh, transport, uh, what the needs will be, and, and leaving a lot of those decisions um, about, about how we address them specifically as late as possible. Uh, so the master plans are not a complete concept at the beginning. Uh, and they evolve very much over time. In Africa, we also have the advantage of, I would say, living in the land of leapfrogging. Mm -hmm. uh, so the countries we're in um, have leapfrogged a number of technologies, um, most memorably the landline, which almost doesn't exist in Africa, um, and um, haven't needed it. Right now, Africa is in the process of leapfrogging banking. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's uh, more Africans use mobile banking technology actually developed in Africa, specifically in Kenya, it's called M-Pesa, than any other region in the world. That means bank branches, who needs yeah. them? Uh, so that's another technology where Africa is moving ahead. We may find some of our best solutions for technology mm -hmm. in our own markets, uh, and they will be African solutions. Mm -hmm. So overall, our, uh, the, the key to what we do is to, to main flex, maintain flexibility, mm -hmm. Uh, learn as much as we can along the way. I think the example of Facebook, I'll take that right back to our team yeah. uh, and let them know, uh, yeah. you know how we can find existing uh, solutions that already exist. Um, and finally, just to the point of, of uh, how you build for, future for, for the future, it was very interesting to hear uh, Devin from uh, Where Is My Transport mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning of the sessions. Um, we are, live in countries of uh, informal transport. Uh, in Kenya specifically, the matatu, which are the little vans that, that make up the transport. There is no public transport to note. Um, so what we do when we are designing the CBD right now, and doing the master plan for the CBD, is we have a route for matatus. We don't want them to come and clog the city, but we want to welcome them, mm -hmm. because that is going to be how a lot of people are going to get to Tattoo City, which is our development in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we build with that uh, mm -hmm. in mind and, and try to accommodate every eventuality. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, uh, listening to this and also seeing the leapfrogging that you mentioned in, in terms of, for example, mobile banking solutions, I think given that Korea is a mobility leader yeah, in uh, transportation and transportation management, in getting people to work, um, and so on. Maybe there are some good areas for cooperation or for learning further that, uh, that can be explored in Africa. Um, I want to come to challenges, and I think I want to stay 
right with, with you on some of the challenges that you overcome. I mean, both basic and maybe more advanced in making the smart city a reality. I mean, what are like the top three or top two things you, you want to talk about that you see? So probably first and foremost is, is maintaining uh, quality uh, mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. uh, sacrificing uh, with it and making it affordable. Mm -hmm. uh, so for that reason, we, we look at uh, new technology that can get us to scale, but is also mm -hmm. um, keeps the, the price point Mm -hmm. uh, affordable in, for the countries uh, we operate in. Um, so again, it's, it's about, um, in terms of challenges, uh, we have much more, um, let's say, basic challenges in some mm -hmm. of these markets. Land title, yes. one of the biggest challenges in Africa. Yes. We, we try to solve the three biggest challenges to an ad a development, and that may be the same with other members of the panel in some countries. Solve the issue of land title. You solve the issue of good planning and you solve the issue of infrastructure, and then you've mm. created a platform mm. uh, for further development. Uh, mm. Each one of those can go wrong, um, mm. but over time, you, you overcome them. It's about having strong teams on the ground to, to face the challenges mm. when mm. they come. Mm -hmm. Ayman, what is it for you? <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I like to think of it as an opportunity rather than a challenge, but you know, we're current of, I mean, I would say the biggest one that I yeah. have to deal with is the the speed of which we have mm. to move. Mm. Um, I think we, you know, we're kind of in a, when I first walked into this job, I was just telling my board, you know, guys, we just need to understand that we're on a train. The train left the station, you know, because the company was formed like a year into that project mm. started. But I don't think it's even a train. I mm. think we're in a rocket. I think ro this rocket is moving in an extremely mm. fast, and, mm. and I think it's, it's actually, the good news is we're mm -hmm. turning you know, a vision or an idea into reality. I mean, if you come mm. and visit today, you will see many of, of the elements of this mm. uh, city are starting to be mm -hmm. off mm -hmm. the ground. Mm -hmm. um, I think in a year from now, um, you know, we're aiming to complete the government uh, district. I think the move should happen within the next 18 months. So I think the wow. speed of which we're, we're, we're moving mm -hmm. extremely fast. Um, which represent a lot of challenges. I mean, I think, mm -hmm. um, you know, building, you know, the, the uh, city management services company, which we're building from scratch, yeah. which is something completely new mm -hmm. um, to uh, the government and, and, and to the country, is actually going to be a challenge. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we need to do it fast enough. Uh, so, mm -hmm. you know, before the move, the company is well established and, and, and ready to run mm -hmm. the place. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. President Han, in your experience, the biggest challenges to overcome? Uh, well, the, uh, the development of uh, uh, the new city and the smart city uh, should be uh, prepared and uh, processed by the you know private company a developer. Yeah. Uh, and but uh, the city is actually owned by the you know government. Yeah. So uh, between the uh, government mm -hmm. organization, you know mm -hmm. the city government mm -hmm. and then also the developer private company, uh, between two organization. And then the collaboration, better collaboration yeah. is very important. Yeah. I think as I told you and in here uh, mm -hmm. in Korea, yeah. uh, the Songdo has been developed uh, under very good you know, collaboration mm -hmm. condition between the Incheon City and then mm -hmm. the private company mm -hmm. developer, mm -hmm. uh, like POSCO, uh, ENC, and mm -hmm. uh, other companies. Uh, but we have other experience in the other country. Mm -hmm. uh, we have... Uh, you know, made the you know joint venture company uh, for development of the new city in uh, Vietnam, yeah. and uh, maybe already 10, 11 years before we uh, organized that uh, joint venture uh, developing company, and then the, uh, prepare and then provided the uh, master plan to mm -hmm. build the new city, uh, and we has got the uh, you know approval from the Vietnam Vietnamese government, uh, and then the, as for the phase one, we have, yeah. uh, you know, actually, uh, you know, successfully complete. Yeah. And then after we finished the phase one, and then the Vietnamese government made mm -hmm. the, you know, direction, you know, gave us the mm -hmm. direction to stop 
uh, yeah. you know, further, you know, construction of the, uh, you know, the city development, mm -hmm. because they would like to change the master plan, mm -hmm. you know. And then mm -hmm. the, from the time then, uh, it took almost five or six years to get uh, re, uh, you know, the approval mm -hmm. from the Vietnamese government. Mm -hmm. During that time, already we purchased the land, mm -hmm. uh, and then the, that was the mm -hmm. our cost. We mm -hmm. have pay the mm -hmm. interest mm -hmm. and to the, you know, the, yeah. the, the bank and something like that. So uh, that means the uh, somewhat uh, government organization and then the private company develop between two organization, uh, the, uh, you know, better, you know, collaboration and cooperation, you know, you know, that this, uh, you know, condition is uh, most uh, important. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, one of the other, you know, experience we have in uh, Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. and also the same, you yeah. know. And so, uh, when, yeah. uh, as the EPC company, uh, yeah. uh, engineering construction company, uh, POSCO ENC, would like to collaborate uh, with the developer, and then mm -hmm. to make the uh, developing company mm -hmm. together with uh, many other countries. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, in the case, uh, I think uh, we need to overcome mm -hmm. the, some, mm -hmm. you know, the, this kind of a relationship mm -hmm. between the mm -hmm. uh, private company developer and then the government yeah. Very organization. True. Yes. Very true. I, 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 I completely agree. I mean, I think the, the amount of projects that the world is full of smart city projects that have slowed down or stopped because of misalignment between the regulator, some government agency, the developer. And it's very hard over a period of time to keep people working keep the expertise on the project. So it's a, I agree, it's a big, uh, big problem. What about you in uh, what is working well, but what did you overcome other than some of the technology issues in India? So Palawa is unique in the sense that it's completely privately developed. There is no yeah. government, anybody else. And so far it's been completely done in-house from our own mm -hmm. funds. Uh, so that's been great. Mm -hmm. But that also now creates its own challenge and, mm -hmm. you know, visits to a place like Songdo. Mm -hmm. um, there was an article yesterday in the Bloomberg which said that given the initiative of urbanization and housing for all, it's a trillion dollar opportunity in India over the next 10 years, oh. right? And models like Palawa were featured mm -hmm. will become the model everyone's going to look at how you can solve urbanization. Mm -hmm. Now the challenge for us is we can't continue to being the landowner the master planner, the construction company, the seller, and yeah. the city operator. Yeah. So we need to actually now step back and start looking for global alliances. Mm -hmm. A lot like what Songdo has done, mm -hmm. you know, the joint venture mm -hmm. partnerships uh, the president here spoke about, is we want to build a new central business district. Who do we tie up for the same? We're very close to the port. How do we build an industrial and logistics park mm -hmm. uh, close to the Mumbai port? Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. want to bring in new universities and create a education hub mm -hmm. in addition to what we've already done. Mm -hmm. um, so there is a lot of opportunity to collaborate with developers, mm -hmm. other uh, experts across the cities in the world looking to come to India. That is the only way we can really expedite and take this forward. So to us now, that is the challenge. Great. Very clear. Carl, I think uh, the way the time is going, you will have uh, pretty much the last word. So go ahead, challenges for you. I have to say I'm a very happy man because yeah. suddenly my small town of 10,000 people yeah. comes in the same league as a massive city of Cairo who's growing with half a million every year. I will explain <laughs> you, I will try to be very brief, but I will explain <laughs> you why. You're growing half a million every year. It took us three years to get to 10,000 people. But we are doing the same thing. Because you want to be the number three after Singapore, Dubai, you want Cairo to be on the map with your GDP. We are doing the same thing as Dubai also in Kurgos. Because for the people who don't know about the, the story about Dubai, Dubai has no oil, gas, natural resources. They even almost don't have a population. Dubai came out of nothing. They had a port, they made the economic zone, right. which grew, the port grew because, and everything grew because of that. So they made something out of, it doesn't sound nice, but they made something out of thin air 
which we are doing in Korkos. There was nothing. We made some. So we are the new Dubai. We said that once in the media, and they kept on re-quoting it. And then, so it went completely out of the context. But we are doing the same thing. And where am I going there with that? Because I'm not going to talk for the whole afternoon, don't worry. But where am I going there with that? Dubai made something that people believed in. They were like, wow, I want to go to Dubai. I want to live there. It's not just the factories going there. It's people going there that go like, I yeah. want to work in Dubai. I want to come to Songdo. I want to oh, look at the park, look at this, yeah. look at the schools, look at the environment. It's something new. It's a vibe. It's a, it's, it's, but it's, it is about people. I will try to cut it short. And, and you ask me challenges. You don't want to know all the challenges that I had in my life in Kazakhstan in the last three years. If I give you one challenge, and that will give you some understanding of what we did. In Korgos, in summer, it's... 45 degrees, mm. and in Korgos in the winter, it's also 45 degrees, but on the other side. <laughs> so that gives us a range <laughs> of 90 degrees, and I'm coming back to the same thing. It is about people, because you need to get your people, you need your buy-in for the people to go to there. Obviously, the first 10,000 people, we didn't make any buy-in to go to there. We said, you will go to there, full stop. Mm. You have to start somewhere, but then the next stage is, how do we go on from there? And then we suddenly become back in the same league. Uh, I am a rail company. We are a train company. And, and in Soviet times, train companies in Russia, they had an expression. They said, trains are connecting countries. Trains, trains are connecting companies. And trains are connecting people. Whether you're in the middle of nowhere in Kazakhstan or you're in the biggest hype town city like here in the world, it is about people. You can make it as juicy, as sexy as you want. You need the people. So we need to work always to have the buy-in of the people from the inside. And that's how you create a real city. So, I think this is a fantastic ending. I hope this was of interest to you. A uh, discussion on smart cities, new cities, technology, the challenges that one has to overcome, including some very extreme temperature challenges. Uh, it is actually an interesting fact that more and more cities are being built in extreme climate uh, conditions. Because also Dubai that you mentioned is of course, uh, it doesn't go down, but it certainly goes up uh, temperature-wise. So I thank you for your, uh, for your interest, your patience. I thank you for your great contributions today. I hope this was of interest and uh, thank you very much. Thank you, sir.